Okay, now we're going to do one-dimensional uh, collisions, mo uh, momentum, and we're going to try to show that the momentum of the collisions is conserved. Uh, so I have an air track here. I have an air source. You can see that what the air source looks like. I turn it on, and air is blowing out of the air tracks, and I have gliders here. Let's say I have equal mass objects. This one is coming and hitting this one. And let's say this one is initially stationary. It's at rest. What's going to happen? Well, if it is an elastic collision, then you know, that means the kinetic energy of the system will be conserved. If they're equal mass, this is likely to stop. So this one, the V is going to be, V final is going to be zero. This one is going to move forward with the same velocity that this one was coming in. Okay? So this is an elastic collision with two objects. And one is initially at rest. So more or less, it's going to stand still. This one's going to move forward. How about if it's an inelastic? This one comes in. This one initially at rest. This one has an initial velocity. This time, they get stuck. What should happen to the velocity after they get stuck? It should move forward with a velocity about half of the velocity that the object had incoming. Half of the initial. Why? Because the momentum of the system should be conserved. M uh, M1 B1 plus M2 B2 should equal to the sum of the masses. So if this was initially zero, you have M B equals 2 M B final. So if they're both the same mass, and uh, therefore the final velocity should be half the incoming velocity. So let's test that to begin with. Let's turn the air on again. So if this one comes and hits this one, notice it more or less, more or less stands still. Okay? I should raise it up a little bit more here. Now it's a little bit more level. Let's do it again. It stands still. That's the elastic collision. Then I can use the other side. There's a Velcro. So they're going to get stuck. So you should notice that the velocity should go about half. Okay? The velocity was cut in half. Okay, so try that again. Okay. Now let's look at different masses. What's going to happen with different masses? Okay. The yellow one is roughly about the half of the mass of this one. Okay. So what should happen? This is kind of like a big truck hitting a smaller car versus a big car hitting a big car or a small car hitting a, a small car. So let's say you have, I'll call this one M, and I'll call this one, uh, I'll, I'll draw this bigger, I'll call this one 2M. If this one comes in with an initial velocity, okay, what should happen? I'm not going to go through all the calculations and stuff like that because it takes some time, but we should find that it imparts some of its velocity to this guy, but not equal to its original velocity, a little bit less. So this one's going to go forward with some velocity that's less than the initial velocity that the smaller guy was coming in with. Because this is really big, so it's hard to make it move forward. This one is likely to bounce back. 
possibly with about the same velocity or a smaller velocity that it came with. So it'll, it's going to have some kind of B final. We can call it B final prime. Okay? So we expect something like that. How about if they get stuck? What should the final velocity be? Well, since the mass of the combination is 3m, right? V final, 3m V final should equal what? The initial momentum of the system is mv initial. V final should be one third of V initial. So if they get stuck, it should the velocity should drop quite a bit to one third of the incoming velocity. Okay, let's try that. Okay. First, I'll do the elastic, comes in. In this case, it actually stood still. Okay. So focus on what's happening to the yellow one as well as what's happening to the red one. Okay. Yellow one goes back a little bit. Okay. The red one goes forward with a less velocity. How about if they get stuck? So oh, I have to change it to this red one so that the bell cord uh, gets stuck. Okay, try this now. Notice it slows down a lot, roughly about one third of its incoming velocity. Again, yeah. Okay, how about the other way around? Okay, that's the kind of collision you don't want to have. When you're in a small car, you go and hit a big car. Okay. Now, the other way around, if this guy comes and hits this one, if this one, it's, it's an elastic collision, it's likely that this one is going to go forward with some mass. This one will continue going forward. So, uh, let's say the initial, uh, it's likely that this velocity will be even greater than its incoming velocity because this is a small object, okay? So it might give it such a big kick that it might be possible for this to be faster than the incoming initial velocity. So V, v final will be some number going forward. How about the final velocity of the 2M? Well, it's likely to be forward, V final prime, this time, though, it will slow down. It will be less than its initial velocity. Okay? So that means it's going to keep going forward, but it will slow down. And it will impart some momentum to the small guy with a certain velocity. And when you do the equations of this, you'll find out, actually, what the velocities will be. How about if they get stuck? Then you have 3m v final equals... 2m v initial, v final is 2 thirds of v initial. So if they get stuck, their final velocity is about 66% of the incoming velocity. Now remember when we first did it, the two heavy mass objects, and when they got stuck, what happened? The final velocity was 50%, right? Uh, the final velocity was 50% of the incoming velocity. When a heavier object hits a smaller object, the final velocity is larger. So in this case, it would be two-thirds. So now let's try this. Okay. So notice, yellow one goes forward with a greater velocity then the velocity of the red, and the red slows down. The other thing you could do now, let's see what happens when they get stuck. Notice it didn't slow down a lot. That's about two-thirds of the incoming velocity. This uh, demo is a good illustration of the conservation of linear momentum. Thank you.